Um, sorry. <laughs> Y'all know when it's, I think I just did. Okay, let me get back out. I zoomed in, but this is the time during the day where I just have to play around and see a way that y'all can see me. So come on in. I am getting logged in on Instagram. So thank you all for joining me today. We always stream live on Instagram and YouTube Monday at noon and Friday at 6 o'clock. So let me get logged in really quick. Let me make my title. And today we're talking about ways to control aphids in the garden because I walked out and looked this morning and we have aphids on our, um, some people, I call them sweet peas, some people call them snow peas, um, but we have aphids on our peas and I don't like that, but it's nothing to get, um, nothing nothing to get all worked up about i just want to give you some information about aphids how we control aphids in the garden um and it's i will tell you it's not one of the worst pests that um they can do damage but it's so many more pests that can take stuff out very quickly so we are getting started on both Instagram and we're also getting started here on um, YouTube so welcome everybody welcome 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 I hope you all can see me the Sun is at its highest at noon so I am going to figure out one day how to do what I need to do to let's try this way. maybe you all can see me a little bit better this way okay so welcome um, again I wanted to do this live because I walked out to the garden today and I gotta be careful because my neighbor said that they found a snake in their yard. So I have, you haven't seen me too much on <laughs> Instagram or YouTube because I've been trying to get, like I got plants down here at my feet. Um, I've been trying to just get things out the way so that when I do walk out here, I can see uh, everything around me. Yeah, they found the snake and that's not good news to me at all. But um, let's go ahead. Let's get through the housekeeping really quick. Um, again, thank you. I hope you're having a marvelous Monday um, thus far. I had to go run back in real quick because it is beautiful. It's sunny, but um, it's a little windy out here. So I hope we can get through um, this with the wind. Um, but we definitely want to talk about AFIT. So first of all, if you're not on our text list, text the word Let's Grow. L-E-T-S-G-R-O-W, all one word, to 474747. 47 47. Text the word, let's grow, to 474747. 47 and that way, whenever we go live, whenever we have specials, whenever we put out um, information, we will text you. And then also, if you are new to gardening, you know someone that wants to get into gardening, um, make sure that you download the free ebook, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden, where we just simply um, get back to the basics of gardening, especially if you're new and just starting. It just kind of fast track you to get started. So um, get on our email list that way by going to download the free ebook, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden, totally free. I still go back to it from time to time and read it because these are the fundamentals to um, gardening. And then if you um, also know someone that's getting into garden, make sure you like and share and tag them. Let them know who we are. What we are is we are Southern Entertaining and we are teaching you to stop imagining about gardening and like looking at the pictures online. And just to start one, just start. That's all we want you to do because I'm telling you, uh, more times you it'll become addicting. <laughs> Gardening will. And you'll want to continue to expand and you'll want to expand some more and you want to keep expanding. So it's just something, it's a good skill to have to know how to grow your own. And it's just really therapy. It's relaxing. It's you're reaping the fruits of your labor, whether it's flowers, vegetable, herbs. It's just amazing to see what one 
tiny seed can produce when you garden. So make sure you like and you share this information with those who are interested in starting to garden. So let's go ahead and let's get into it, y'all. I want to talk about the three main ways that I, um, the three main things that I do in the garden when I see aphids like I did today. Um, basically what happened is, I wanna tell you this, I think it's so important to do garden walks. And I'm not talking about if you have a big garden, if you have, even if you have like a, um, like a pot, this is chocolate mint, and you just have one pot or you have two pots, I think it's so important that you get into the habit of coming out to check your plants. Try to do it on a daily basis. And the reason why I want you to try to do it on a daily basis, and this all goes back to when you start gardening, you have to um, know how much time you have to do it. Now you can put systems in place um, as you begin the garden, but one thing I want you to make sure you put in your schedule when you garden is just come out, check, check leaves, check on the underside of the leaves, check around the plant, check around the soil of the plant. So just get into a habit of checking your plants daily, at least daily. Now, sometimes I'll come out here two, three times a day and I will um, check my plants, but you don't have to check them that much. Just get in, into a routine of doing it. And what that's going to do is when you start seeing things, not necessarily pests, but when you start seeing different things going on with your plant, you can mentally say, well, it was not like that yesterday, or it wasn't like that two days ago. So you'll have like a time frame if things start happening to your plants, you'll have a time frame to know when did this start, which I think is very important. And so that is how I know I checked uh, my peas and we did have a few aphids. And so I checked again, they are diminishing, but let's go over some ways. Um, let's first talk about what are aphids. Aphids are a nuisance <laughs> to me in my garden, but they're just a small, soft body insect. And a lot of people say, well, where do they come from? Sometimes they can lay dormant, lay eggs. And you know, like that's why I tell people fall is my favorite time to garden, seriously, because it's not a, a lot of pest pressure. Now, as we go into spring, into summer, the pest pressure is going to amp up sometimes. You can have some good seasons where, you know, everything goes good, but you want to be prepared for it. So, Aphids are just some soft body insects that they feed on your leaves. And normally you will find aphids on the underside of your leaves, which is why I say when you um, put garden walks or garden checks into your schedule, you're also checking not only the top of the leaves, but check the underside of the leaves as well, because aphids normally will be on the other underside and they're going to be sucking the juices out of your leaves. So that's why I say um, just make sure you check all around. Also check around the soil. Check that area as well. Now aphids, sometimes they don't do a whole bunch of damage, but you got to get them up under control because they can multiply, y'all. They can multiply so quick. And where you might see a few on one leaf, if you don't start that um, maintenance, the preventative maintenance or just the pest control maintenance, in a few days, they can have multiplied. And then that's when they're gonna start getting out of control because what aphids do is they suck on the underside of the leaves. And then what they'll do is they'll secrete this substance. It's like a sticky substance, which will then invite ants to your plants. And this can be flowers, this can be vegetables, this can be herbs, it doesn't matter but they secrete that. So, you know, it's like a cycle. They're, they're feeding on the underside of your leaves, then they're secreting a substance, which then uh, will signal the ants, you know, the ants like sweet stuff. So then now you have a problem with some ants too, some of them. 
Um, so you just want to get this up under control before they even start multiplying, before they even get started. Y'all type, type in the chat. Can y'all see me okay? I feel like the sun. I feel like I need to move like one more time. I'm going to move y'all together. It is, I just feel like the sun is in the way, like a glare, like maybe you can't see me. So type in the chat if you can see me okay. Okay, but then... Okay, so with the aphids, all of this stuff is going on and then they're uh, reproducing. Now, like I said, most times, if your plants have what I consider a uh, good immune system, because we want to have our plants have a good immune system and ways you could do that is do your garden walks, take care of the plants. Um, thank you, Carolina Roots, take care of the plants. Um, feed them, make sure that they um, don't dry out and, you know, just have a good immune system. That's what I always say about plants. Just like us, you want to have your immune system so that if pests do start to bother them, if you have a healthy immune system, it may not affect them as opposed to a plant that's just stressed out. You know, if you're stressed out, then it's more susceptible, you know, of getting those different type of pests. So that's one thing that we want to do is just keep our plants um, in a healthy state so that if things do attack, that the plant can kind of fight them off. So you want to do, you definitely want to do that. But most of the times it's not a problem, but sometimes you will see like a stunted growth um, to your plant if you have a lot of aphids that's feeding on those leaves. Sometimes the leaves will start dropping off. Um, and then sometimes they will, uh, I'm looking, when I keep saying, um, I'm looking at Instagram because for some odd reason it says it's poor connection and I don't understand why. <laughs> I don't understand, but I hope y'all are still with me in Instagram land. Uh, I just, I have my bars up and I'm on my Wi-Fi, but it, it wants to act. I may have to go on the LTE if, if I keep getting that message where it says it's pausing or uh, reconnecting there. Okay, so we're talking about what aphids can do. Most of the time, if you get them up under control, you really won't see a big difference to your plant. But if you keep letting them multiply, then that's when you'll start to see like distorted leaves or um, a stunted growth. Yellow, You may see yellow leaves. Um, you may see some leaves falling off. So you just have to make sure you get this stuff up under control. Now, aphids can be several colors. The ones that we have um, are light green and they're brown. But I have seen some that are um, a pinkish color too. And it's just, it's, it really is, if you haven't seen it, just a soft body, little small insect. Look like it can't harm anything. But over time, if you don't get it up under control, it can and then this also goes back is when you have a healthy garden and you bring in those beneficial insects like um, the ladybugs or if you have lace wings in your area. Most of the times when everything is going like it's supposed to go, your plants are healthy, everything's good. Most of the time, those beneficial insects are, will be happy to take those plants and get, I mean, to take those aphids and get them off of your hand. Like they'll feed on, they'll come and eliminate the aphids for you. That's like food for them. So when everything's going good, um, then the beneficial insects will help you as well. But when you're doing your garden walks, these are the three things we do and we do them in stages. Um, and we keep an eye on them. What I want to tell y'all right now, this is what I want to tell you because this is where it, you can sometimes um, mess up, okay? Don't think it's a one and done. Don't just do these steps that I tell you and then do it one time and it's done. You can't. You have to stay on top of it. So the first thing, is you're gonna get like a stream of water uh, with the hose or something like that, and you're just gonna spray your leaves. Now, don't have it too strong to where you're damaging your plant, but just have it strong enough where it can wash those aphids off. That is step number one. And let me just go back really quick, y'all. What I like to do is when I do any type of pest control, whether it's water or whatever, 
I like to wait to the evening time because um, I want to make sure all of my beneficial insects, I want to make sure all of my bees are just like wherever they sleep at, I want to make sure they're asleep, okay? <laughs> I don't know where they sleep, but I just want to make sure that everything that I'm doing is not going to harm anything else. So the very first thing I'm going to do this evening is I'm going to take my hose with a stream of water and I'm just going to spray it real good and knock them off. Knock them off, try to get rid of them, and that is the first thing um you're gonna do and and carolina roots like yeah you can you can spray i mean you do want a kind of steady strong stream but you don't want it like too too strong you know like some some of those hose attachments are like powerful you know and then you you kind of tear your leaves up a little bit and you're doing stuff like that so you don't want it that strong but you do want it steady so that you can knock them off that's the very first thing that you want to do and what I would do, like I'm going to do that tonight and then I'm going to come back in the morning and I'm going to check them just to make sure because remember, they they can reproduce really fast. And you may see 20 right now, but if you don't get it up, up under control, then you might see 75 or 100 in the next few days. So I'm just going to come out here and check in the morning after I do this tonight. Now, if I see where it's becoming a problem, this is step number two, and y'all know I gotta have props for y'all, okay? So the first thing I'll do, and you can do either one, it just depends on um, you and your preference. So the first thing is, this is the um, Dr. Bonner's, this is the Unscented Baby Pure Castell Soap. So on here, you they have the instructions on how to make what's called an insecticidal soap. So that is what I do next. And I use this and I'll mix it up in one of my spray bottles and I'll have it on hand. I'll have this on hand and I'll come out and check, you know, when I think all of the pollinators, bees have went up and if I need to spray, then I'll go ahead and I'll do my spray. This is already made up. But if you don't feel like doing that, at a lot of garden centers and uh, the big box stores, you can have it already made. I mean, it's already made. This is ready for use right here. Um, it's for organic garden. It's still kind of like an insecticidal soap, but you don't have to mix it up. So this is just ready for you to spray. And they have other brands too. It does not have to be this brand, um, but just make sure you look on the, um, make sure you look on the front because it tells you what is, uh, good at killing or controlling we'll say controlling because they also have another one that may kill you know like the the worms and the other ones but this one right here is specifically for killing white flies mealybugs and aphids and it's already made up all i have to do is just put on do whether i want the spray or kind of like the stream and then you can spray that on your plant so that's step number two i like i say i always do it in steps depending on how bad they're getting i always try to do everything um, when it comes to pests i always try the water method you know just do the water or if it's worms i always try to pick them off you know so so just try that first but then if they start getting to where you see that they're multiplying that uh you'll you can either just get this bottle and this lasts a long time because their writing is so little on here, y'all. They have a lot of writing. And sometimes I'm just like, I might need a magnifying, gla <laughs> magnifying glass. But it's, this goes a long way. And you can just make it up. And it'll tell you how much to put in there per like 16 ounces or per 32 ounces. And it would be that I can't uh, find it. But I, it, it is on here. So you just make it up according to the directions and you can have this over a long period of time like this this goes a long way so um you can do it that way mix up the water or you could do ready to use however you want to do it it's totally up to you and you can um just as you see fit if you see aphids in the evening come out here and spray them and always make sure if you can if you have time because i know a lot of us have to get up and go to work to, uh in the morning so if you have time try to come out there the next morning if it's light and check and see if it's uh okay because again it's not a one and done like i may 
just check and you got to give it time to work now you know it, it's not going to work like in an hour or but you just want to keep in your brain okay it looks like the population of the aphids is lessening i'll give it a few more days and i'll come out because you may have to do a second spraying you may have to do a third spraying the goal is you do not want them to get out of control to where they have pretty much taken over the whole entire plant and that is when sometimes you just might have to make that decision like if it's too bad your leaves are distorted it's stunted they're all over the place you may have to make a decision to pull it but you don't want you don't even want it to get that far so you don't want to do that now the third thing that i use is when i see that the insecticidal soap is not working then I'll take it up a notch. And remember, I'm doing three phases here. I'm doing the water phase first. I'm doing the insecticidal soap um, treatment next. And then if I still see where they're just not listening to me and you still want to keep reproducing, then that's when I come in with the neem oil. This is the concentrate, but they also sell the neem oil as a spray, a ready-to-use spray just like this. So I just like to get the concentrate because to me it goes a, a longer way. Like we've had this for a while and you just mix it up according to the size of your container, according to the instructions. Now, with the neem oil, you definitely, definitely, definitely want to do this. You want to do it um, in the evening. Not only for the bees and the pollinator, but when you um, put this on during the day, it can burn your leaves to your plant and you don't want that and the neem oil is basically from the neem tree it's like a a, a tropical tree and I, it produces seeds if i'm not um, mistaken and so they press those and they make oil but it's a way to control um pests in the garden and this one uh the neem oil like it says it on the uh package here it controls aphids white flies, other insects, um, black spot, rust, powdery mildew, and spider mites. Like the neem oil is very helpful, but you definitely want to make sure that you spray this like late, late in the evening so that you're not burning your plants and you're not, um, you know, the bees or the butterflies or the pollinators that they're not affected. I know a lot of things say organic, but I still just like to be careful and just be mindful because we definitely need the bees. And I always, if I'm doing any type of pest control maintenance or preventative maintenance, I always try to do it like at, not at night, but like when the sun um, is about to go down, but you can still see outside, you know, you can still see what you're doing. So the neem oil is my number three way. Like if they're not listening to me when I spray the water, telling them to go away. If they're not listening to me when I do the insecticidal soap, okay, I gave y'all a chance to leave. That's when I come in with this. And with this, um, if you spray it like you want to wait a little while, like I said, give it time. It's, it's not going to be like a one and done. Give it time to start working. Like if they've gotten to a point where I have to do this, then I'll do like a seven day, you know, I'll come back in seven days and maybe do it again if they're still there. But I feel like when you start these methods and you're checking, then you will see a decrease, a decrease if not eliminate them at all. So I just wanted to share that with y'all because we do have aphids. Um, now I do notice that when it gets really, really hot, they'll kind of decrease in population, but this is springtime. A lot of things are waking up, including um, different eggs that's been buried over the winter, you know, with pests. And so I just do my garden walks and really try to look on the underside of the leaves. I really try to look um, at the soil if I can see it, just to make sure and keep a mental thought or write down in your journal so that when you do see stuff, you're like, it wasn't like this. So it, it has to be new. So I'm gonna go through the comments and then we're gonna recap. So thank you all on Instagram for bearing with me because I don't know what's going on with the connection today. Um, and then thank you all for joining us on YouTube as well on this beautiful Monday. Um, I was able to get a lot of things done, but if you're just joining us, um, my neighbor told me that they had a snake. So I have not been on social media this weekend because I've really been trying to get all of these plants that are at my feet planted. Um, 
because she said theirs was at the back door curled up and so I'm like I got so many plants here that I need to play so I've been doing that and just getting some things planted in the ground and not playing around and I did that both uh yeah Saturday and Sunday and we'll do a little bit more once I get off today as well but I'm just gonna go through the chat so if y'all have your questions put your questions in the chat and we're gonna uh recap again uh hello Elizabeth off work today so glad I could watch oh okay I noticed a lot of ants yesterday more than normal but I didn't see any aphids they're near my peas should I work no don't worry don't you worry at all just go and do your checks Sometimes ants, we have a problem. We don't even have to have aphids. Like I have a problem with a couple of ant beds that uh, they just, I don't, I don't know why. I, I don't know why they won't go away. I've tried to break them up. Um, I've tried to put grits. I've tried to put cinnamon and they just like disperse. Somebody did tell me to go find, like you have one ant bed to go find another ant bed and like mix them together some kind of way that may stop them but um yeah i try to do get the ants to go away and they won't go away and but no don't worry just just keep an eye on it just keep an eye and then that way you will know but i i wouldn't worry too much and just make sure that the ants are not um affecting your your plants as well so yeah i would definitely just keep an eye, but don't, mm -mm, don't worry at all. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Carolina Roots. Okay, Carolina Roots says she spray heavy with water. And most of the times when you are uh, spraying with water, keeping checks on that, they'll get up under control. They will get up under control. The I think the thing is just staying on top of it and just making sure that they don't just start populating to where they just take over the plant and then it's just gotten so out of control to where it's just like they're covered, like your plant is covered. That's what we're trying to prevent. And when you check up under those leaves, you will know and see right then and there what you need to do. But most of the time, the water is going to um, do the trick. Yes, yes, yes. At work, but thank you for listening. Yeah, this is my this is my lunch break right here. So y'all notice that I won't be on as long as I'm on like uh, on Fridays at six. You notice Monday, I, I, it's a little bit quicker because this is uh, during my lunch break as well. Um, I recently made insecticidal soap. Did you, do y'all hear the wind? It's really windy today because the aphids had taken over my kale. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm trying to stay on top of it. Yeah, and 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 it, it and that's why I say aphids. I'm not saying aphids are, uh, you don't wanna have aphids, but it's not one of the worst pests to have. Like I would rather have aphids over the army worms and uh, the cut worms, you know, because aphids, once you stay on top of it, you can get them up under control. Now, some of the other pests i'm like where y'all please go just go away but yeah you you'll definitely stay on top of it and it's a good thing that you're doing those checks on your plant but insecticidal soap should help them to slide right on off of there and not be able to grip the underside of that leaf so that they can continue to um suck on the underside of the plant and the only reason why i really worry about the aphids like I said, they're not the worst to have, but they can sometimes carry different diseases from plant to plant and that and, and can do like another plant harm. Like when they go to other plants, if they have picked up a disease or something because they're feeding and sucking by their mouths, then they can possibly um, give your plant a disease or something. So that's why you want to definitely get it uh, up under control. You definitely want to do that. Hello, Vegan Loopy. I hope I'm saying your name right. I moved them and had to cut them back. Okay, but kale has started to regrow. So you guys are are doing kale. I just looked out, uh, came out today, and the kale and the collars, I'm going to have to go ahead and pull them. And I plan on pressure canning some and cooking some and freezing some because they are starting a lot of our leafy greens here um they're starting to go to seed so i know that i'll probably uh pressure can a lot of the 
I'm looking now. When y'all see me looking over there, I'm probably going to pressure can a lot of the kale. I got a lot of kale, but we use a lot of kale in our smoothies um, as well. And the collars, I'll probably pressure can some of those as well. But that is good. Kale, that's, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> kale, collars, turnips. Um, I love it. Those are some of my favorite okay carolina roots i'll look into it yes they did that to my cabbage yeah yeah they can and they just come out of nowhere and a lot and like i said a lot of people say well where are they coming from they can have been dormant and it's starting to warm up now and they can be emerging um a lot of times the wind can bring insects in it's just so many different ways that's why it's so important to uh stay on top of that right there i'm just going through y'all comments before i recap you got my note your notepad and pen taking plenty of notes <laughs> you, that is awesome about okay denise brown you are so uh yes you're so welcome but yeah and that's why i'm gonna read um denise brown's comments she says she's learning so much about gardening from from you so thank if these chat if this comments don't stop okay gardening is more work than i thought but gratifying it is and so that is and i just want to speak to that for a couple of seconds that's why i tell people when you are starting to garden you really have to know how much time you have to devote to it because you um it's it is gratifying i love it i i know i stay at least six to seven hours out here Saturday and maybe about five yesterday but I, it was just like I was in my own world but you have to spend that time with your plants you know and making sure everything is good to keep those plants immune systems up but the reward just the reward of being able like this morning as I was um, looking because we have three uh, sweet pea or snow pea plants only one is affected and that's crazy too like you know, you can have, we have three, but only one was the, it was one that was affected, but we do have some snow peas and it was just amazing. Like I was literally out here this morning, like picking snow peas and eating them, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's gratifying when, when I'm cooking, you know, just to come pick herbs, but you do have to just tell yourself, okay, I'm going to spend, you know, just 10 minutes out here a day, walking the garden, uh, or on Wednesday, I'm going to spend an hour weeding and feeding or something like that. But it's a very, it's, it's something good to know how to do, to grow your own. I was listening at something yesterday and he basically said what I said, like you grow your own, you know, what's put on it, you know, what's done to it. It's just amazing. It's so much fresher. Um, the nutrient quality of it all, just literally walking steps away um, picking them and just taking them inside, like the nutritional value. Uh, if y'all were here with me Friday, you know I said when I was getting off, I went and picked me some roses. These roses smell so good. They had my whole bathroom just smelling so good, but I went and picked some roses. I ran a warm bath and I put the rose petals in there. Every week I can do a flower arrangement and to me, I don't know, I might be biased. It seems like my flower arrangements last longer than if I were to buy them in the store. When I'm cooking, I come out here and I pick my herbs. And you don't have to do a whole lot. You know, just having one or two things that you're growing is just such a gratifying feeling. And that's why I say, I tell people to beware because you're gonna wanna keep expanding. You want to, once you reap the rewards of gardening. You're gonna wanna keep expanding. You're gonna wanna keep adding plants uh, and more plants. My husband looked at me yesterday, but he helped me. I tell people like, he knows how much I love this. He's not a, a garden person, but he'll help me. So he helped me do like a little new space to put more uh, plants in. I think I went out maybe like four feet on both sides of the new garden. and. I try to do a garden tour every month just to show y'all the changes in the garden. So I'll make sure that I include that part in there. But yes, um, gardening is, it's, it's amazing. It's just so amazing to me. 
Uh, you are so welcome, Elizabeth. Your apple tree's got aphids. Bad in the serene soapy water usually helps out. I'll try uh, the Bronner Brothers. Yeah, and and it doesn't have to be uh, Bronner Brothers. Is it Bronner or Bronner? Because they got a Bronner Brothers. Okay, this is Dr. Bronner. Okay, I just, because they have the Bronner Brothers like hair care products. But um, I've known people to use, um, now they say don't do it because sometimes the formulation uh, can change over the years but I've known some people to take like Dawn dish detergent just some soapy water because what that does is they it, it, it causes a slippery like it caused the leaves to be slippery and so they can't grasp like the the pest can't grasp them so it that's what the insecticidal soap do because if you look on um, this insecticidal soap right here like a lot of them have like some type of oil or something on there so it's basically just creating an environment to where the leaves are so slippery that the pest can't grasp on it and you know suck the underside and suck the juices out of the leaves they'll have a hard time um, doing that so if the soapy water works um, definitely keep doing it and I hope you get that up under control um, because apples are so good i love apples y'all love apples i've been dealing with slugs yep vegan loopy we did a video on that we have a slug and a snail problem and um we do the beer traps we have like a beer trap uh that we do but we have them right now and they thought they thought that they were about to eat my cabbage up and i'm hoping that my cabbage make it i see the heads forming i see them curling up but for us that's a cool weather one and uh it got i don't know this this year's weather normally it wasn't normally it's not like 90 degrees in april and we've had a few 90 degree weather so i'm hoping that it will make it because i like making sauerkraut never knew i like sauerkraut until um i looked up a recipe and tried it and it was so good and it's very very good for you um, but that's why I grow uh, the cabbage and we also grow to cook with it as well but um, I hope you get those slugs up under control and you can you can get them up under control definitely try the slug trap and then I also um, if you haven't watched it they have an organic version of a they're like little pellets snail and slug pellets that we use as well um, in the garden in different parts and it's organic and it'll hopefully keep them up under control because that is, yeah, we have a bad problem with both the snails and the slugs um, here. So I hope y'all get that up under control. Okay, at home with Cherie. Uh, aphids didn't mess with my kale last year, but tried with my tomatillos and chard. Yeah, I got them up under control. And that's what it's all about. You said the key word, you have to get them up under control because they're not... Like I said, I would rather have, I don't want any pests in the garden, but they're not one of the ones that could really like decimate your plant overnight. They, there's some pests out there that really like an overnight, two days, it's, it's gone. I'm obsessed with gardening. I'm so glad. I'm so, yes, I'm, that is music to my ears when people are growing. And that's why I say it doesn't matter how you grow, where you go, grow, just grow it. Hello, Gardening with Bernie. And uh, I'll watch those videos. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Just watch that on the slugs because we definitely have it. And I showed the product that we use. And then you don't have to get the snail and slug bait. Uh, if you have like an empty can, like a little shallow. We use the tuna can for years. Um, and I do have a snail. And, do I have one up here? Uh, we use a, a like a tuna, just a can where you can pour beer into, but you have to like change it every few days because they're attracted to the yeast. But this year we were trying the snail and slug base. It's still the exact same thing. You still uh, pour beer there, but we have some type of animal that continues to come in and like just do I, I don't know. I'm going to sit up one night, all night, and just wait for them to come in because I really want to know what it is. I can't figure it out, and I know they just do stuff and leave stuff, but this is the snail and slug bait, so you just kind of bury it a little bit and pour the beer in here, and then um, you'll they'll just fall over in there and people say you know get drunk off the beer but really they're attracted to the they're attracted to the yeast smell but yeah take a look at that video 
um, because if you don't want to do that method, I can say that those little pellets that they have, um, they work as well. So for all of you who are joining us, we were going over three ways that we um, combat aphids. I came out this morning, I looked at my snow peas and we had aphids on the leaves. So let's go ahead and recap real quick. So the first thing you want to do I, I just really think it's important is to go ahead and just schedule some time every day, whether it's when you get off work, whether it's when you get up in the morning, whether it's when you're about to go to bed, schedule a few minutes to just do a garden walk. Walk through the garden. If you have a container or like, a bal like our garden friend doing balcony garden, just take some time, take your plants, inspect the leaves, look on the underside of the leaves, look around the soil, just take the time to do that because what that's gonna do is if you do have a pest, if you're doing that on a constant basis, you'll know that I didn't have that yesterday or I didn't have that last week. Um, and then also make sure you journal down which pest you had in your garden because some, some gardening seasons, pest pressure can be heavy and then some gardening seasons it could be, you know, you don't have any pests. Because I always tell people, I'm not being Debbie Downer, but I just want you to get your mind ready. Like, it's not if you have pests, it's when. But if you don't have pests, that is amazing. That's amazing. But I want you to just be thinking about ways or what you're going to do because just having pests in the garden is not the end of the world. I mean, think about it. You're, Y'all, we are growing some good stuff. Who wouldn't want to munch on it? Who wouldn't want to chew on it? But we don't want them to because we want we want to enjoy our own stuff. But I mean, you got to think about it. They're they're just they know good stuff. They know good stuff when they see it grow. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do after we do our garden walks every day is if you do see the aphids, go ahead get your water hose, get you a steady stream going, and just knock them off. Knock them off and then come out over the next few days because you're already doing your garden walk. Come out over the next few days and just uh, make sure that they are decreasing in population because they can, they, can, um, they can increase in population really quick if you don't get them up under control. Before you know it, your whole plant will be seriously with aphids all over them. So what you wanna do when you're spraying that water is you want to just make sure they're decreasing in population. They're not getting more. Now, again, I tell y'all, I know it's just water, but I always, always do all of my pest control in the evening. In the evening time, when the sun is about to go down, but it's still light outside, I would just wanna make sure that whatever I'm doing is not harming the beneficial insects, the bees, the butterflies. I do not know where they sleep at, so, but they go somewhere and they go in for the night. So I do all of this during that time. Now, if you are unable to do it, just try to do it like early, early, early in the morning before they, um, before they come out. So like early in the morning, but I prefer like later on in the evening. So if you're doing the water and you don't think that's not working, then what we use is we use uh, the Dr. Bronner's. This is the unscented uh, Pure Castell soap. And it has the directions on here, depending on the container. Like if you have a 16 ounce spray bottle or a 32 ounce spray bottle, they have the measurements on there. Um, mix it up according to the instructions by adding the water and how much they tell you to use. This goes a long way, but if you can't find it, you don't feel like making it up, you can always, always, always go to the garden center, get you some ready to use. It does not have to be this brand. I just make sure it says for organic gardening, ready to use. All you gotta do is turn this and start spraying or streaming, however you want to do it. Um, and this is ready to go. No mixing required. You're gonna still continue to do your garden walks, keep an eye on what's going on. And if they are really not listening to you, because you've told them, y'all go away, don't keep on my plants. If they're not listening to you, that's when you are going to come in with your neem oil extract. Now, this is the concentrate. You mix it up in a spray bottle according to the instructions um, because we have a 32 ounce bottle. So we'll mix it up like that and then um, 
you can also get this ready to use too. It comes in a spray bottle just like the insecticidal soap. It says ready to use. So you can use that as well. The only thing I want y'all to remember with the neem oil is you want to spray it like at night because you don't want, especially not during this time because it can burn your leaves. So you want to spray it at night. Make sure you're getting not only the top of the leaves, but the under underside of the leaves and i also um i also um sometimes spray around the soil you know around the soil of the plant i'll do that as well so those are the three things that we do in our garden to combat the aphids it's not the end of the world you know and like i said they like it too what would you recommend for gnats <laughs> Though I don't know if y'all have sand gnats. We have what's called sand gnats. And they are very irritating. And we also have gnats too. Now what I'll do is they, they're they called um, sticky, sticky traps. They're inside. Y'all probably have seen them. They're like yellow. They're yellow and then you peel them back and it's really sticky. But the thing about it is it's, it, it will cause the gnats and the flies, like once they get on there, they can't get off. But it, it can affect the, uh, that's also for our beneficial insects too. I'm not sure about the bees, but I know I use those when I start seeds inside. Like sometimes um, we'll get like fungus gnats or sometimes uh, we will get um, just the different gnats flying around and it's irritating. So I'll use those sticky, those little yellow sticky tab, tabs. What I will tell you is come on poor connection with ig i'm not sure what's going on um it's something new i don't want to recommend it yet it's a granule it's totally organic but it's for gnats so give me a chance to like really test that because i tell y'all i'm not going to recommend anything if i don't like it i won't even say anything about it if i don't like it but if i recommend it it's because i've tried it i've tested it it's and it it, it has my stamp of approval I just tried this um, this year, and it's supposed to be for fungus gnats, but I just want to make sure that it does what it's supposed to be doing. So just stay tuned. If I like it, I will definitely um, put it out. I'll put it like in an email or tell you about the product or how I like it and where you could get it because there is, you mix it, it's granules, you mix it in with water, and it's supposed to... Um, be for gnats as well but for right now what we use and you can use those yellow sticky tabs in the garden too they have like a little wire that it comes with and you just take both sides off and you just stick it in stick it in the plant like you can stick it straight in the plant and so it'll catch all of those gnats and all of this you know all of the, the irritation and like i said i don't know if you have fungus gnats but as soon as you go and, um, or sand gnats, as soon, because we have very sandy soil, as soon, y'all, as soon as I start, like, digging, those sand gnats just, like, and they're so disrespectful, like, they're in your face, they fly in your eye, in your mouth, in your nose, in your ear, they're very, very disrespectful and so irritating. I'm like, seriously? Like, really? Really? <laughs> but, um... So I just wanted to uh, just let you know, don't get discouraged. If you see aphids in your garden, just use those three methods. Do your garden walk and get them up under control. So uh, yeah, the garden critters are annoying. I'm going to sit out here and see what it is. It's an animal. Um, we've had possums before. Um, I don't think it's an armadillo. I really don't. We've had them before. Um, it, there is a gray cat that is like the neighborhood cat. Um, and then I don't think we've had a raccoon before. I think, I think it may be a possum, seriously, but I made a mistake and left some of my dry, um, granule fertilizer out here and chewed the bag up and stuff everywhere. You know, just ridiculous. <laughs> just, it's really ridiculous, but I'm going to, I'm going to catch whoever is coming out here and they, they know what time to come too, because I stay up pretty late sometimes and they know how to get around the lights because normally the, the security lights will come on. It's like they know, it's like they already know what to do. I'm telling you, very smart. Whatever animal it is, is very, very smart. Um, 
Yes. Okay. Hello, the Emerald Terrine Aeropant. I hope I'm saying that right. Aeropant. Okay. Okay. A little sand just on top of the soil. Okay. So Elizabeth said for the sand gnats, sprinkle a little sand just on top of the soil or just gnats in general. Okay. So Elizabeth says to, and, I, and I'm talking on Instagram too, to sprinkle, this is for the gnats, sprinkle a little sand just on top of the soil to get rid of the gnats. I will definitely try that. We'll definitely, definitely try that. So I hope you all um, found some of this information valuable. Again, like and share if you know someone who not only is getting into gardening, but if they're having problems with aphids, make sure you like and share this information. Um, again, text Let's Grow to 474747, and that's when you'll be notified when we go live and when we have specials. And then, if you haven't downloaded the Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden, um, make sure you download that totally free. Um, and then, we're going to have some uh, other goodies that I'm working on coming up as well. I actually took some time off, y'all. Um, over the next few days, I still have to work Monday and Tuesday, but I took some time off because I want to get some things out um, to y'all just because I know that we're about to get heavy with gardening. All of my northern friends, um, y'all will be warming up soon. And so we're just here to help each other out and just be successful in growing um, and just, you know, just having fun with gardening. That's what it's that's what it's all about. So I will um, thank you so much on IG and YouTube for joining me. So let me get off because my lunch break is almost over. But I, I want to make sure I answer everybody in the chat. Uh, the big fly. Oh, yeah, we, got, we have those big flies, too, as well. At home with Cherie. It sounds like a pot. I think it is. Yep, yep. They are. They're sneaky and they're smart. I'm telling you, they know how to get around here they get in and they get out and they just do so and they're i don't hear them and i'm a very light sleeper and and the patio is like right next to our bedroom i don't hear them but you could tell like when i came out here this morning or yesterday morning i was like seriously really it was nothing in there but yeah i'm gonna sit out here just one night i don't know if i'm gonna sit in the dark by myself <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to sit in the dark because I know if they see light, they won't come. But I'm going to maybe just sit uh, by the kitchen door and just watch. Just watch. Because one of them, one night, um, the security lights came on. And I saw them, like I went outside and I saw them like just running. So, they're yeah, they're very smart. And I do. I think it's a possum. But I'm, I'm going to find them. I am going to find them. Uh, hello, UT33200. You are so welcome. I hope you and Kiddo and Angel are doing uh, well. But I am going to, uh, I'm going to get off here and go. And um, for lunch today, we are, uh, my husband and I, we do Meatless Monday. So we got quinoa with black beans, sweet potatoes, avocado, you know, kind of like a bowl, kind of like a little bowl there, avocado and was it corn, I think? Corn, I think, that I'm going to make. So, um, y'all enjoy your enjoy the rest of your Monday. And then I will see you if everything goes well. We'll be back Friday at 6 o'clock. We're going to try to get uh, a video up for you on Wednesday if everything goes the way I plan. You always have to plan A, B, and C. Set up a camera pointed in that career. Okay, yeah. I am at home with Cherie. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sister's name, and I hope I'm saying your name right, too. She she says Cherie, so I hope I'm saying it right, but that's my sister's name, and I am. I'm going to I'm going to catch it because I'm just curious as to what it is. Now, it was a gray cat that used to hang out right in the, in the back on the patio in the corner, and he used to think I didn't see him or something, but I don't know. I haven't seen him, and I don't want to see him no time soon because he digs a lot as well, so... You all have a, uh, okay, good. I hope I was saying it right. Okay, so you all have a good Monday, and we will definitely be talking again soon. Y'all take care and be safe. Bye, y'all.